Welcome to the, to the Women's, women's Cave. Cave. And I'm also going to put this on the Meet Hollywood Mondays. We'll see how this goes. And I think she was like, just mad because I like beat her to the Welcome to the Women's yeah, that, Cave. Yeah, it is true. And then she was like, and also Meet Hollywood Monday. I need a little spotlight on me. I mean, I am. You don't need a spotlight on you. You don't. You truly don't. <laughs> and I think Jane told me I had lipstick on my teeth or something like so that. So I need everyone to like lipstick on my teeth. switch on over and see the video cast of this podcast because this. It's hilarious with her like lipstick all no over. No one her can teeth. see it. It's okay because my teeth still look white. Oh, yeah. oh. You, look, you, look, you both look beautiful. <laughs> okay, see? See, see okay, now, that see? is LA for you. Let me just smooth this out for you. It's, it's bad when your guest smooths it out. I'm Jade then. And I'm Lamona. <laughs> Duly chastised, right? And we yes. are on literary life guys with pop poetry. Sorry. So you're laughing at yourself this is sad yeah, yeah, i'm laughing at myself oh. all the time literally <laughs> left you look like one of my best friends louisa abernathy she's she's an actual she's an actress who lives in hollywood who's never driven in her life but she's been here for 50 years and she's been a working actress for 50 years sounds wonderful to have never driven <laughs> in her life <laughs> yeah, like, can, I, can i get like that like i just can someone Drive me? That would be fat. Okay, anyway, literally like a pop right? I got distracted too if I was thinking right? about how I never had to sit in the LA traffic and drive. Oh my goodness, that would be amazing. There's so much you can get done. So much, anyway. And I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons, and I thought being grown up was easy. And Which if only I would meet a memoir in verse, and I thought I did my journey alone. Uh, and the Women's Cave and other pop poems. poems. Our number one best selling poetry anthology book. Okay, well, we like to call them literary life guides, so please remember that. Okay, because find out boring. everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. All right, you co host. You to hear about us. Oh, you want to hear about our co host? Then you're going to hear about our wonderful <laughs> guest. I almost forgot. It's just because she's cuter than me today. The, oh, it was just like, oh. I am never cuter than you. Never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. She's like, I'm never cuter than you. I'm prettier. Well, I don't, I'm mature about it. I don't have the cuteness. I have the that is not what I was saying at all. Introduce <laughs> <laughs> you yourself. I am Tanya Todd. I'm an author, actress, and education chair for the Henderson Writers Group. Yay, she added the education chair to that game. This is fabulous. I'm so excited. This is a good day. This right. is a good day. Now we should get to our now, main star. Yeah, so our wonderful guests that you're here to hear about, and now that's drawn on and on. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is uh, Johnny Keith. I'm originally from Texas. Got married very, very young, like everybody does in Texas. I went to the border when I was 18. I said, I want to go to Hollywood and become an actor. And they said, have you been married, divorced, and had two kids yet? I said, no. They go, well, you're not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back, had my two kids, had two marriages. And then at 23, I got into a truck that I paid $50 for, no money, and just drove out here. And I've been here for 30 years. OK, so first. We need to address the 50s. Right. Let's unpack a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, okay, I mean, married, divorce, two kids. I mean, we, we get it. Yeah, right? two marriages. That's, that's life. That. That's life. I mean, come on. We have a whole book. Like, and I thought divorce was bad. Ugh. But by 23? <laughs> dollar. That's truck. typical. If you meet a girl right now in Texas, 23, she's been married once or twice and has one or two children. You meet a girl here who's 50, she's still living at home with her parents. Oh no, yep. a little <laughs> different. Wyoming, and um, I believe she got engaged at fourteen, and she was getting married at eighteen. And, and we were like, she was like, I waited. And why I was are like, you fourteen? For what? But anyway, no, no judging no. of that. I was still we. I need to talk about this fifty dollar truck that and made where it. Can we get one? Wait, that made it from Texas <laughs> to LA. Like we need to have a conversation about that truck. Like what was the brand? Like what was the year? So we can maybe buy one of those. Yeah, we're back in like the early 80s, I think, because <laughs> I graduated 82, so got married right away. Well, my, so weird. I, when I was 18, I married someone who was 16. Silly. So I, that's what they do back there. Then I got married again when I was 19, and that's that was my high school sweetheart. And we had two amazing children, and I wanted to get my kids out of Texas so they wouldn't follow the cycle. So when they were 15, they both moved to L.A., and they're still here right now. The problem is a condo was $1 million. So they can't get a house. They have to hustle, hustle. I'm thinking, did I do right? Should I have left them there? At least they would have a life, a house and some cars, but LA's tough. You know, they're 35 now, 36, 37. And you know, they're driving Uber and it's weird. Even though I have this amazing company they should be working for, but I found out that nobody really wants to work anymore. <laughs> Especially oh, this okay. year, huh? <laughs> no, I, no I, I've had my own business for 30 years and I put together a program where I was going to mentor people, teaching them, you, know, you could be a window washer, a dog walker, massage therapist, but nobody wants to get up in the morning and physically go work 
you know, because I have the whole system down, invoicing, scheduling, but I'm moving on in life. I moved out here to be an actor, and that's what I'm finally getting around to doing because I did get my third marriage around when I was 33, and we were married for over 20 years, and we just recently divorced. We're best friends. We have a business, and we think, well, if we don't want the marriage, why should we lose the best friend? Why should we lose the marriage? So we're the best of buds. Um, she's visiting her friends right now. We both manage an apartment building, even though I live here. So I actually stayed there at her place, which was my place. It was kind of weird waking up this morning, not seeing any of my pictures. And there's my dirty laundry. And I went, where's my hamper? <laughs> <laughs> you should today write was, a book about all this. <laughs> uh, it was a little, so today was a little emotional when I saw all that, because I actually, Thanksgiving was our cutoff point as far as me staying the night there and stuff. So I've actually been in this place for I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 days. So it's all fresh. Oh, it's all uh, brand new. That's why everything's all pretty and clean there, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, she actually helped me fix this place up and got me all organized. She still washes my clothes right now, but I'm sure that's coming to an end. That's a sweet deal for you. I know, right? <laughs> I was looking, I get one of those deals. Did somebody wash my clothes? My dad was washing my clothes, though. So. She, she's amazing, though. She is amazing. I just don't understand why we're just not on the same page anymore. And after a while, you just agree to disagree and you have to move on in life. So that's what it's clear doing. you both still love each other so at least you can have that you can still have the friendship yeah. and the love the well best. what's going to happen is we're going to get remarried in about 10 or 15 years when we're <laughs> but that, my parents it'll be an epic thing. love story no 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 i think you might end up marrying your 19 year old sweetheart <laughs> again <laughs> uh, let's see i had a i had a donna a debbie and a denise so i gotta get rid of the d's my next person's going to have a J or an A or a C or something in front of their name. Wow. It will be a while from now. I'm, I'm not available for dining and dating just yet. It's too emotional. Just need some time to need some me time right now. Absolutely. I feel like you should like write a book about like $50 <laughs> trust and out to LA and then like just put all these stories in it. Like all or at least write a script about it. But yeah, possibly. It's just, you know, I moved out here, but you know, for acting, I was doing quite well unfortunately no disrespect to her because you know i cannot say anything bad about her but she just wasn't that supportive of the acting it was a little sabotage or i, I don't know what it was i don't really get it but even my podcast which i've been doing for uh, almost two years now to she totally hates it she totally does not like me spending time and i and in her defense you know she wants to spend time with me she wants to watch you know netflix movies she wants to yeah you know, it sounds like her life like snuggle time you know, so I get it. She wants to retire, you know, and I, I get it. And so she's retired now. So that's, you know, we work and save money. So she's retired and she doesn't need a man to come save her, you know. <laughs> um, so we're in really good positions right now. I'm just, you know, I'm just happy. I'm finally getting back out there. I've been in the Screen Actors Guild for a while. So I just started doing a bunch of extra work just to get on set. And they pay you for COVID tests now. I was on the Kalinsky method with Michael Douglas the other day. And I did three COVID tests. So before I got there, I was already up $300. And oh, you, wow. Then they pay you $178. Plus, so I made 500 bucks being an extra watching Michael Douglas act. I mean, that was a pretty damn good day for me. There are worse <laughs> things you could be doing with your time, huh? <laughs> yeah, I didn't, get, I didn't get featured, but I was on American Housewife, got featured. Bob of uh, Hearts Abolition, I got featured. I was just on the Mr. Mayor with Ted Danson, got featured. I just signed with the manager. Everything seems to be happening just because the unit, I'm free. There's nothing blocking them. I'm, I'm putting it out there. And my podcast went to number one, finally four times. I'm number two today, but I'll take it. I'm always number three, number five. But I, I do that for free. And I just love interviewing the actors. I love hearing their stories, whether they're in Indonesia. Oh, you mentioned wait. this podcast several times. Huh? This podcast? I, oh, it's called Actors 2020 Podcast. Yeah. And I just do it for free. I don't charge for anything. It takes up a considerable amount of my time. I mean, four interviews last Saturday. I got one six o'clock tonight. I'm interviewing someone from India. But I just love giving people the opportunity and the format to tell their story. And plus, it keeps me fresh because people who would never give me the time of day, like directors and producers, I'm interviewing them and I'm getting nice tips and tricks. So it keeps, yeah, you know, that's incredible. Then, so I don't know. I never thought. And when I started it, I didn't even plan on getting back in because in 2006, I left the business because I even wrote, direct, produce. I have a couple of movies on Amazon, but the people were so mean in the business. They were just so mean and such liars. But now going back on the set, everybody's so nice. 
maybe it was the Me Too movement. Maybe, you know, I don't know, but every, because everyone's like, excuse me, what'd you say? Here's my camera. Say that again. So I don't know. Everyone's so nice now. So I love being back on the set. I have a good feeling about it. I, I, I feel that I'm going to be a host of some type of, I want to be a host of a children's show. I'm amazing with children. I love, love, love children. And I can get them to come out of their shell and talk to me. Because when I have conversations with kids, the dad's going, what are you guys talking about? I go, I'm just talking to him. But I don't know. I get kids to open up. And even on my podcast. But you, you do have children actors on your show. I mean, you, your podcast features a very diverse group of actors in a wide range of both ages and ethnicities. I mean, is that an organic or was that intentional? No, not at all. Oh, but what I was going to say, I had no intention of getting back into acting, but then I interviewed these two guys that were over 50 and they were killing it. I was like, well, I'm over 50. I still got my screen <laughs> on card. Why don't I just give it another shot? And it's, you know, the progression, it's, it's, been, it's been good. I feel I'm in a good place right there. You know, emotionally relationship, not so good, but you know, but it's still fresh it is it is if it's doing good on your job well it's going to do horrible at home right and so it's kind of a lot of people they drive uber and or you know actors back in the day you had to be a waiter so i opened up a small little business because i have a plumbing master plumbing license from texas so i I do something called retrofitting i work for like 300 of of the top real estate agents here in la so when they sell a home i go in and i put something called an automatic gas shutoff valve on your gas meter plus about six other things. The same thing, same people, 30 years, I don't advertise and I got it down to where, and, it's, and me and my ex-wife, we run that business together and we, you know, we do pretty well, but it frees my time up so I can be an actor. I wasn't planning my kids moving down and getting married and support a whole family, you know, to do all that. So I'm finally getting there. I only got a few years left. I got to get on it. <laughs> only a few years. We have years. Tanya, I know you have some good questions. No, I actually have oh. a question. Well, no, no, I'm sorry. You have your to show, you go first. Thank you. I just have a narcissist question. Oh. I had to say it like that because otherwise Jay wouldn't let me have my narcissism question. Which of course is would you ever interview some people who act like they write? Of course. Of course. Right. I question or question. Uh, oh yeah <laughs> definitely oh my god you two on my show i would never get a word in that's what edgewise i'd have to interview you, you uh, separately <laughs> 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 I can't do a pause. You, have, you have to take some water sometime exactly. what? okay let's not Tanya. Tanya. Let's have my coffee. okay so what were the steps it took to re- achieve the title of top 10 international podcast in performing arts um, I, I think it's not thinking about it because I mean, I don't know SEO. I don't know anything about like promoting. I try to do a Facebook ad, but I know I always do it wrong. So I just said, you know what, just forget about it and just focus on the actors and focus on the stories. But I think when you interview somebody who has 40, 60,000 Instagram followers, boom, they tune in and then they tell two friends and so on and so on. Because sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I'm number 53 today. How am I ever going to get, wait a minute, I'm number 20. Oh my God, did I just get in the top 10? You know, I'm like, I could, I could never get number one. I could, one time I got number two, always number three to number five. And then one day, November 11th, it was my son's birthday. I woke up, I went, oh, son of a, I can do it. It's doable. <laughs> you know, so now I know that I can, I can do it. And that keeps me going. Cause I was going to stop after a hundred episodes, but then I, cause I proved my concept already, but then I'm kind of doing it also, um, not only for them, because now that I, I'm back, I, it kind of just helps me stay focused on acting because, you know, we can go by, to a month ago by, you're like, what have I done? Well, right now I feel good. I'm working out every day. And uh, Actors Access, you guys familiar with that website? So they have a thing called Talent Link when you can uh, pay $35 and say, I'm available for agents and managers. And I did it three times last year. And no one did anything. No one contacted me. And I go, I'm just going to do it one more time. I got two managers that called and an agent. And I just signed with a manager. I mean, and I, Congratulations. And I was like, why would they take me? You know, oh my God. And I don't know, you know, I'm older. I don't have a, that great of credits, you know, but I don't know. I'm just happy and I'm thankful and I'm blessed and things are going amazing right now. And I just want to keep it going. That's, that's very exciting. It's interesting <laughs> to hear this from the actor's perspective because we tend to interview managers um, and they're always talking and raving about their older clients are killing it. And I'm like, yeah, they're like, yes, they're out there. They're booking jobs. 
Really? I hope so. I think I'm the fresh face no one's ever seen. Oh, well, well, that's exciting. Well, now, I mean, wow, our, our time is gone. Can you believe it? So you, do you have one more question? A question? And just one. Oh, okay. Just one, Tanya. Just one. I'm sorry. Tell us about silent screenplay. How did you come up with the idea? Okay. What did you learn being on that side of the project? Right. So I used to manage an apartment building in Beverly Hills, and Roger Corman was going to film there, and I kind of weaseled my uh, a part in. But we, we check the references, and they pretty much destroy your place and never pay. So I'm like, if anyone's going to film a movie here, I should. So I took a two-day film class called Dove Simmons. It was like, he goes, this is the story. 12 people are alive in the beginning. At the end, they're dead. One location, that's your movie. And I went, oh, okay. So I got a video camera. I started doing some scenes. I knock on my tennis door. I go, oh, by the way, I'm going to come into your house tomorrow and film a scene because I was the manager and I had the keys. They're like, uh, okay. <laughs> and so then it started looking pretty good. So I went, I, I heard that Quentin Tarantino and, um, and another, uh, somebody, there's a new camera called the Sony VX 1000. So I found a guy who had that and he came and he filmed it. And then I bought a better camera, XL1. And basically, if you don't focus on the acting, the lighting and the directing, it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a good story. <laughs> uh, it's a good story, but then we finally, I, I did another movie called Lone Star Cowboy. It's that poster right here, but I don't have music clearance for it. And it's not, I can't put it out there with someone else's music. I don't want to get sued and it's kind of, you know, I don't want to do that. So if I clear that music, I'll put that out there. But then I finally got a director and we did Silent Screenplay too. And that's the real movie that looks amazing as far as I'm concerned, compared to the first one. <laughs> and that one has the beginning and the middle of the end. And it just goes back to the people in the business because the director says, I shoot every film, I shoot every scene, no other DP that would not be a representation of my work. I go, yeah, but we have flashback scenes and you need to put them in. He goes, I didn't film that. They're not going in the movie. I'm like, wow, okay, I'm done with Hollywood. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you're so mean. <laughs> Yeah, but you're back in it now, huh? <laughs> yeah, but, but and, and they were sitting there and I got some contracts for it, but it looked like I would have had to spend 40 or 50 more thousand dollars just to get distribution. So I just canned it. And then, you know, Amazon Video came out and I put them on there and I started making some pretty good money in the beginning, but then they figured out how to only pay you $2 now. <laughs> and so, I mean, I could put them on other platforms, but you know what? Even though I directed and produced, I appreciate everything that everybody does but i just want to be the actor now i just want to come on the set shut up say my lines don't talk to anybody and then get the hell out of there that's what i want to do now even though i'm an amazing producer but we'll see what happens <laughs> I just oh wait you're shooting now so there's not craft service to a crafty table like that yeah no it's not, <laughs> not, no it's not it's not the same it's not the same we can't yeah ask. yeah when you go on the set they don't even give you access to it harley you know you're like can i go to the craft service they keep all the extras kind of in one well six feet apart and with masks that's the reason i wanted to do extra work so i have this really expensive microphone i bought it something called podfest but you can't interview on the set because everybody has the mask and you got to stay six feet away from them so when that's over I'll be interviewing actors on the set. That would be fun, fun, fun. Ooh, that sounds like a blast. So where can people find out more about you and your acting and um, your IMDb, your IMDb? Because I found out that, that is extremely important for acting. So I always try to tell people like, what's your IMDb and your oh, it's Internet Movie Database is imdb.me backslash my name, Johnny Keith. And you spell Keith, K-E-A-T-T-H. You have to have that vanity URL and I put that in every one of my castings now. I put it out there because my manager says, if you're not under if you're not under a hundred thousand on the star meter, no good. And I was like, what, six hundred thousand? And it went to three hundred thousand. Today I'm forty-four thousand. So I've been really oh. pushing it. And I think it's because of my podcast, you know, because I put the links there and I think people are clicking from Indonesia, Egypt, Lebanon. And I'm like, wow, I'm forty. Hey, there's a lesson for me in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's the, yeah, make sure you make that vanity link. And anytime you do a casting, just put it up there because they're going to click on it. And inside your email, if, when you email, put it down below. So they'll click on it. And since I did that, I got to 77,000. Then I started doing that. And now it's 44, but it comes out every Monday. So we'll see what happens this Monday. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. So, but I would say, just go to actors2020podcast.com, actors2020podcast.com. That's the podcast. And you know, I have a website too, but you know, it's just my resume and stuff like that. There's, there's links, there's links on my podcast stuff. It's johnnykeith.com. 
K-E-A-T-T-H. That is fabulous. Thank you so much for coming on today. We really <laughs> appreciate it. We had like a blast. Well, thank you because I would actually like like to know more about you guys. Maybe you guys should email me and um, you know, starting next year, I'm starting season five. I would love to have you guys on my show. It's, Absolutely. Uh, and we'll come with the Will actress, which is Tanya, and she's about to tell us all about where we can check out her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you can wear your pajamas. It's all it's audio, and you can mess up as much as you want because I edit it. I really <laughs> I edit it because I'm so bad. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just mentioned how much time your podcast takes up. I believe that's the it does, yeah. but, but I love it. I'm passionate about it. True. You, know, you yeah. have to do what you're passionate in life because if you do it, it's not like you're working, you know, but it's every single day. Oh my God, working with editors and but I get it done. I produce. I produce. This whole thing is what's your dream, and this is his dream. Let him do it. <laughs> yeah. So Tanya, let's talk about. Where the people can find out more about you and maybe your IMDb page, Tanya, actress. <laughs> I do have an IMDb page, but you can just type in my name and I'll, you'll see my face and it'll pop up with my crazy mane. What? I'm on so social media at Ms. Tanya Todd and my website is www.mstanyatodd.com. Awesome. Fabulous. And y'all please go check out both of the IMDb pages. They need those, those clicks. They need to get hired on places. So Jaden will only get eat. Yes, please. Right. And craft services when the world opens. So. Oh, yes, please. Yes. That's very important. We need to eat. All right, you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. While you're there, take a moment. We'll know. And on the homepage, you can click on the Lady Style podcast where you can hear professional actors read my script that I wrote. All right. And more importantly than all of that, take a moment, go to the Ladies tab, go to the middle, and see the charities that we probably support. Maybe you can support them too. If, and if it's only just a kind note that says thank you for doing this wonderful work in the world at them on social media, maybe you can say that. We really appreciate it. And just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. Peace and love you guys. Well, well, no, no. And Jade, bye bye. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs>